In July 2025, something historic happened in Israel that almost nobody noticed. A crane placed the final beam on the 72nd floor of a tower in Givatayim, a suburb of Tel Aviv. And with that single piece of steel, Israel entered the Super Tall Club. This is the Beyond Office Tower. At 308.3 meters, that's 1,011 feet, it's the first building in Israel to break the 1,000-foot barrier. It's taller than the Chrysler Building in New York, taller than London's Shard by 2 meters, and it just became the tallest building in the entire Middle East outside of the UAE. Now, I know what you're thinking. Big building. Cool. Why should I care? Here's why. The height of a city's tallest building tells you everything about its economy, its ambitions, and its future. Global Super Tall Context 300 plus meters equals super tall, CTBUH definition. Only about 180 super talls exist worldwide. 58% are in China. Until 2025, the Middle East had zero outside UAE and Saudi Arabia. For 60 years, Israel's tallest building was stuck at 238 meters. The country built nuclear reactors, desalination plants, missile defense systems. But when it came to skyscrapers, they stayed cautious, low-rise, modest, because earthquakes, because fighter jets, because this is a tiny country that can't afford mistakes. The Beyond Office Tower isn't just a building. It's Israel saying, we're done playing it safe. We're building vertical cities now. And today, we're going inside the engineering, the economics, and the question everyone's asking. How do you build a 1,000-foot tower in a war zone? To understand why the Beyond Tower is revolutionary, you need to understand Israel's complicated relationship with tall buildings. It started in 1965 with the Shalom Meir Tower, Israel's first skyscraper. At 142 meters and 34 floors, this was a big deal. For the first time, Tel Aviv had a building you could see from anywhere in the city. It held the title of tallest building in Israel for 34 years, until 1999. But then, Israel stopped. Why didn't Israel build taller for decades? Three reasons that sound paranoid until you remember where Israel is located. Fear number one, seismic activity. Israel sits on the Dead Sea Transform Fault System. Major earthquakes hit every 80 to 100 years. The last big one, 1927. That means, statistically, the next one is overdue. Building a 300-meter tower on an active fault zone, engineers were terrified. Fear number two, fighter jet flight paths. Tel Aviv is 15 kilometers from Ben Gurion Airport. Fighter jets training out of Palmachim Air Force Base fly overhead constantly. For decades, the Israeli Defense Forces had height restrictions around major cities. Too tall equals flight hazard. The tallest buildings were capped at about 200 meters. And fear number three, target considerations. And here's the brutal reality. Tall buildings make excellent targets. Hamas fires rockets from Gaza, Hezbollah from Lebanon, Iran fires ballistic missiles. A super tall office tower with 10,000 workers, that's a strategic nightmare. Until recently, insurance companies wouldn't even insure buildings over 200 meters. The turning point came with the Azreli Group, Israel's most ambitious developer. In 1999, they completed three towers in central Tel Aviv, 169 meters, 187 meters, and 154 meters. Not super talls, but a psychological breakthrough. Then in 2017, they built the Azreli Sorona Tower, 238.5 meters. The twisted design, rotating 45 degrees from base to top, was specifically engineered for seismic resistance. The torsion distributes earthquake forces more evenly. It worked. No cracking, no structural issues. And that's when developers realized, we can build here. We just need better engineering. Which brings us to the Beyond Office Tower. Designed by Ronnie Ziss Architects, engineered by David Engineers Limited. The question was simple. How do you build 308 meters tall on a seismic fault without killing everyone inside? 
The answer is a reinforced concrete mega core. The central core of the building, where elevators, stairs, and utilities run, is built like a bunker. Concrete walls up to one meter thick at the base, tapering as they rise. The structural system, core equals 18 by 18 meter reinforced concrete tube. Outrigger trusses, every 12 to 15 floors, steel trusses extend from core to perimeter columns. Dampers, tuned mass dampers on upper floors absorb wind and seismic motion. Foundation, concrete piles driven 40 meters into bedrock. Design standard, withstands magnitude 7.0 earthquake plus 100 kilometers per hour winds. The outrigger system is key. When an earthquake hits, the building wants to sway side to side. The outriggers lock the perimeter columns to the rigid core, limiting movement to under 0.5% drift. That's less than one and a half meters of sway at the top. Uncomfortable, but structurally safe. But here's where this project gets insane. The Beyond Tower topped out in July 2025. That means the final two years of construction happened during an active war. Construction Timeline 2019 to 2021, Site Preparation Excavation 2021 to 2023, Core Construction, Floors 1 to 40 October 2023, October 7th Attacks, Construction Halts for two months 2024, Work Resumes with Labor Shortages, Palestinian Workers Restricted 2024 to 2025, Missile Strikes Land Within 5 Kilometers Multiple Times July 2025, Structural Topping Out Ceremony. Multiple times, air raid sirens went off mid-construction. Crane operators had 90 seconds to climb down 70 floors to the nearest shelter. Iranian ballistic missiles landed in Ramat Aviv, 8 kilometers away. Houthi drones targeted Tel Aviv, and through all of it, they kept building. The war created a massive labor shortage. Before October 7th, around 20% of Israel's construction workers were Palestinians from the West Bank with work permits. After the war started, zero. Permits suspended indefinitely. The Beyond Office Tower hired Chinese construction firms to fill the gap. Workers from China brought in specifically for super tall expertise. They cost 30 to 40% more than local labor, but the project was too far along to stop. The economics demanded finishing. Building a super tall isn't just engineering ambition, it's financial insanity. Let me show you the math. Beyond office tower costs, estimated. Total development cost, 650 to 750 million dollars USD. Land acquisition, 80 to 100 million dollars. Construction, 450 to 550 million dollars, around 1800 dollars per square meter. Timeline, six years, 2019 to 2025. For comparison, that's three to four times the cost per square meter of a standard 20-story office building. Why? Because everything gets exponentially harder as you go taller. Crane costs multiply, need bigger cranes for higher floors. Concrete costs rise, pumping concrete 300 meters vertically requires specialized equipment. Wind loads increase, stronger structural system needed. Foundation goes deeper, more piles, more cost. MEP systems, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems become massively complex. But here's the brutal economic reality. Who's renting all this office space? The Beyond Tower has 130,000 square meters of office space across 72 floors. That's space for about 10,000 workers. Tel Aviv Office Market 2025. Vacancy rate, 8 to 12 percent, historically 5 percent. Rental rates, 25 to 35 dollars per square meter per month for Class A office. Annual revenue, if 90% occupied, $35 to $45 million. Payback period, 15 to 20 years. The developer, Tidar Investments, is betting on long-term appreciation and prestige tenants. They're targeting multinational tech companies, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, who want flagship Middle East headquarters. The building's branding, beyond the ordinary. Premium pricing for premium tenants. But there's a question nobody wants to ask publicly. What insurance company covers a building that's been shot at during construction? 
I reached out to commercial real estate insurance brokers. They told me, off the record, that insuring super talls in Israel requires geopolitical risk riders that cost two to three times normal premiums. And after October 7th, some insurers walked away entirely. The Beyond Tower solution? Israeli government-backed war risk insurance. The state essentially guarantees that if the building is destroyed by military action, reconstruction costs are covered. Without that, the project would never have gotten financed. The Beyond Tower holds the crown for now, but not for long. Just 15 kilometers away in northern Tel Aviv, an even taller monster is rising, the Azraeli Spiral Tower. Azraeli Spiral Tower Stats Height 350 meters, 1,148 feet, 12% taller than beyond. Floors 91 stories. Type Mixed Use Offices, Hotel, Retail, and Hopefully Literally. Construction Start 2025, Expected Completion 2029 2030. Cost $900 million to $1.2 billion. The design is stunning, a spiraling glass facade inspired by DNA helixes. Each floor rotates slightly, creating the spiral. Engineered by the same team as Osrielli Serona, using advanced seismic dampers and a mega core system. And then there's Toha Tower 2. 298.2 meters, 76 floors, expected completion 2026. This will be Tel Aviv's tallest office building when it opens. And the tenant? Google Israel headquarters. Google is betting billions on Israel's tech sector. This tower is their Middle East flagship, entirely LEED Platinum certified, with solar panels, rainwater harvesting, and advanced HVAC systems. It's the most sustainable super tall in the region. And if you think that's ambitious, wait until you hear about Bain Arim Tower in Ramat Gan. Proposed height? 400 meters. That would make it taller than the Empire State Building. Status? In planning, environmental assessments, community approvals. Expected groundbreaking 2027-2028. Completion early 2030s. If, and this is a big if, it actually gets built, Israel will have three buildings over 300 meters by 2032. So why does all this matter? Because Israel is entering the vertical city era. For decades, cities sprawled outward, suburbs, highways, low-density development. But land is finite. Tel Aviv is surrounded by sea on one side and other cities on the other. The only direction left is up. But there's a bigger story here. The Beyond Tower makes Israel the fourth Middle Eastern country with a super tall, after UAE, Saudi Arabia, and Kuwait. And it's the first super tall built in an active conflict zone. That sends a message. We're not going anywhere. We're building for the next century. You don't invest $750 million in a tower you think might be rubble in 10 years. Super talls spark confidence. They're permanence. In July 2025, when that final beam was lifted into place on the 72nd floor, the construction crew held a topping out ceremony. They waved flags. They cheered because they knew what they'd accomplished. They built a tower through a pandemic, through a war, through missile strikes and labor shortages, and every excuse to quit. And they finished it, because that's what makes a super tall different from a normal building. It's not just steel and concrete, it's defiance. The Beyond Office Tower is Israel's first super tall, but it won't be the last. By 2032, there could be five buildings over 300 meters in Tel Aviv alone. The skyline is transforming faster than anywhere outside Asia. And here's what that tells me. Geography doesn't determine destiny anymore. Israel is a tiny country, 22,000 square kilometers, sitting on a seismic fault, surrounded by hostile neighbors. And they're building some of the tallest towers on Earth. Because in the 21st century, ambition isn't optional. It's survival. Would you feel safe working on the 72nd floor of a building in a conflict zone? Or is the Beyond Tower a symbol of reckless ambition? Let me know in the comments. I'm genuinely curious where you stand. 
Until then, stay curious, stay ambitious, and remember, the impossible is just the thing nobody's tried yet. See you next time. Thank you.